In today's video, I'm going to share all the details of my solar and electrical system, what I installed and how much everything cost. But first, I want to show you all the electrical appliances that I use on a daily basis so you can understand how much can really be done with free energy from the sun. After I show you my system, I'll explain how you can size your own system to fit your unique needs. And stick around until the end, where I will give you a detailed explanation of how each component in my electrical system operates. If you want to know more about any of these products, there's a link to my Amazon shop page in the description. Now let's take a look at my electrical system. We're going to start out up on the roof. The solar panels will determine how much energy you're able to collect throughout the day. The limiting factor for most vehicles will be available roof space. This will determine how many watts of solar you can actually install. In most scenarios, I recommend filling the roof with as much solar as possible. My roof is 14 feet long and about 7.5 feet wide, so I decided to install four 320 watt axiom panels for a total of 1,280 watts. Now keep in mind, those ratings are produced in a laboratory and your actual results will vary. I purchased these panels brand new directly from a solar distributor for only $97 each. I have a video that explains how you can also find these deals, link in the description. Now let's head back inside. I'm going to cover the heart of my system. It's a hybrid inverter charger. This single device brings in the solar power from my panels, converts it into 120 volts for all my residential appliances, and charges my battery bank. It also has a shore power input, which allows it to perform all these functions with an electrical outlet instead of solar. I chose the SunGold Power 3000 watt 24 volt unit. It's currently selling on Amazon for $539 much cheaper than buying an individual charge controller, inverter, and shore power charger. Now the last main component of my electrical system is the battery bank. I installed two 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour LifePo4 batteries. They have a combined storage rating of 5,120 watt hours. These batteries are currently selling on Amazon for $499 each. So now that we've covered my solar and electrical system, I'm going to show you how you can calculate the proper size system to meet your unique needs. And stick around to the end, I'll go through all the auxiliary components inside my electrical cabinet and explain how everything works. The first step to sizing a system is to determine what electrical appliances you have or plan to install inside your home on wheels. You'll want to find out how many watts each appliance consumes. For example, this Ninja Blender consumes 1100 watts. And that is a per hour rating. So if I was running this blender for 30 minutes, it would consume 550 watts. So make a list with all your appliances and estimate how many hours per day you will use that appliance. For example, this blender only runs for about five minutes to make a smoothie, which would consume about 92 watts. Now add up all the estimated watts per day of each appliance. That will tell you how much energy you will use on any typical day. Of course, this won't be an exact number. Some days you'll use items more and some days not at all, but it's a good general rule. Here's my calculation. I came up with a total usage of 5,575 watts per day. Assuming I'm somewhere hot and running the AC, which really only happens a couple months a year. The rest of the time I'm using way less energy. The second step is to match your solar capacity and battery storage to at least that number. Oversize your battery bank to account for days with less sun. For most folks, your limiting factor is going to be solar capacity. It comes down to how many panels you can fit on the roof. My roof is 14 feet long by about 7.5 feet wide, so I installed four 320 watt axiom panels. The math here is four 320 watt panels will probably only deliver about 90% of their rated output under perfect conditions, which is a total of 1,152 watts. And if we take into account that on an average day, those panels will receive five hours of direct sunlight, we take 1,152 watts times five hours per day, 
means I should be able to take in 5,760 watt hours of energy every day. Now the third step is to calculate your battery bank. I have two 200 amp hour 12.8 volt lithium batteries which store 2,560 watt hours each, totaling 5,120 watt hours for the entire bank. Lithium batteries can be safely discharged down to about 10% capacity, which means I have 4,608 watt hours available. Now keep in mind, the batteries are really just energy storage for the times when the sun is not out. Most of the day, you'll be running directly off solar power. And you should always have a little extra battery storage on hand. I recommend a battery bank that's up to twice as big as your daily usage, just in case. It's never fun to run out of power. So now that you've seen my system, what I use it for, and how to calculate your own system, I'm going to provide an in-depth explanation of the individual components inside my electrical cabinet so that you can understand how everything connects. So again, I have the all-in-one Sun Gold Power 3000 watt inverter charger that brings in the solar power from my panels. It brings in the 110 volt shore power if I plug in outside. And additionally, it uh, works as an inverter. So it's connected to my batteries, which are underneath this cabinet. I have two. 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour time USB batteries, two of them wired in series into a 24 volt battery bank. And so the way it works, I have all my cabling coming up out of the floor. So I have my power line coming from the battery up and over, it goes through a fuse. Uh, this is ultimately to protect the entire system. So if something happens and the batteries get shorted out, uh, or there's a, a short to ground, it'll blow this fuse and it will basically just cut off all the battery power. After the fuse, it goes into this on off switch. It's always a good idea to have a on off switch so that you can easily disconnect power from the system manually. If you just turn it up, that uh, cuts the battery power, turn it back on, that allows the battery power to flow. And then after we go through the on off switch, the power comes over and it goes to this bus bar. And so the bus bar is basically just a hub where that energy can be distributed out to different components. So off the bus bar, I have one lead that's running down to my refrigerator because I do have a 24 volt refrigerator. So I got one lead coming out for the fridge. And then also on the bus bar on the top, I have one lead that's coming out it's going down over to the opposite side of my van and that's where I have my water pump and my a few LED lights and other things connected. So this lead goes down under the floor to the other side and then off of this bus bar, off of this bus bar I have another lead which is going up to this step down converter. So when you have a 24 volt battery bank, all your regular 12 volt devices like a water pump, LED lights, max fan, have to be run off a step down converter. So that's what that piece does, it powers all my 12 volt devices. So those are all the different power points that split off of my bus bar. And then from the bus bar, we go up into my Sun Gold Power inverter charger. And so whether it's uh, pulling power from the battery or sending power to the battery. It all runs through these uh, large cables here. So I have these two leads for my battery. And then additionally on this side, this is where my solar wires come in. So I have a positive and negative off of my 1200 watt solar bank. And then over on this side, I have AC out and also AC in. So the AC inside this is going this is coming from my shore power which runs down underneath the van and then on the other side of the van i have a shore power plug installed so if i want to plug in somewhere to an outlet then it comes right up into this device and it powers all my 110 appliances and outlets and also charges my batteries and then over here this is my ac output so whether i'm running off of shore power or if i'm running off solar power Right now my battery is fully charged. If I'm running off solar power, then it converts that voltage or the battery voltage to 110. And then that 110 flows out and it goes up 
into my breaker box. And so this is a 120 volt breaker box. I have, right now I have four circuits uh, that are set up. I have all of my grounds over here on the ground bus. I have my neutrals up here on a neutral bus. Those are all the white wires. And then, so my 110 comes in, it goes into this distribution hub. And then from here, it's distributed out to each circuit breaker. So I have my outlets and my air conditioner, which is currently off and another bank of outlets. And this one is just an extra, it's not currently in use. And from here we go up, I have one outlet box right in here. So eventually I'll build a shelf on the wall so I can uh, put like my GoPro and all my camera batteries and, and other little devices I need to charge. They'll charge on the shelf and plug in right here. This is also where I plug in my battery charger for my electric drill and a few other things. So this outlet box stays here. And then uh, up above, I have a line here that goes up to my kitchen exhaust hood and my LED strip lights. And then over here, uh, this line right here goes up to the countertop and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So coming up to the countertop, uh, I ran this device right up, mounted it to the wall. And so this is a one, two, three, four, five, six. There's also two on the bottom, eight. This is an eight way outlet. And then also it has USB hubs on the side as well. So this is my kitchen outlet now. I have a spot to run my blender and my Instant Pot and whatever cooking appliances I wanna use. Also, I'll probably be plugging in my iPhone right up here and uh, some other things, just a convenient spot to have all my electrical devices. Now, if you look closely at the wiring itself, I really wanted to try to do a, a clean job and have everything look very finished and professional. So I used uh, this, this is called uh, wire loom, but it's like a braided nylon uh, material. And so it goes over, you slide it over the top of your wires. And so it gives it just kind of a, it's a little bit protective, uh, and, but then also it gives it just a nice look, a nice aesthetic, a nice finished uh, appearance. So I went ahead and added loom to all the wires. And I also of course used heat shrink to hold all the loom and the wires in place just to keep things from moving around. So all my connections have loom and then also heat shrink. I used zip ties to make little wire organizers. So these zip tie organizers just help space all the wiring out and it keeps stuff from getting all bunched together and tangled. So you can see all the wires follow a nice path. They're easy to trace out. This one over here looks a little a little less organized, but overall it still, it still functions really nice. And so this is the Victron Smart Shunt. And what this does is this is basically a battery monitor. So it allows me to look and see what kind of um, energy is flowing in and out of my system and just monitor the health of my battery. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So when we hop into the app, uh, the first device there, that's my Smart Shunt. We'll click on that, let it load. And then once we're inside, it shows you a percentage. So I can see right now my battery is at 100%. It shows me what the actual voltage is. And then down here, it shows me current in amps and also power in watts. So the cool thing about this is this will show me how much energy is coming into or out of the battery. So if I wanna know, for example, how much energy my air conditioning is using, then when I'm running the air conditioner, I can look at the current going out and I will know how much energy the air conditioning is using. And additionally, it shows you consumed amp hours. So you can really track how much energy you're using in any given period, like say in a day or in a week. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I know there was a lot of information presented, but the purpose was to provide a general overview of my electrical system, as well as the cost of my main components. If you want additional information on the products, they are listed on my Amazon shop page, which can be found in the description. If you want individual help with designing a system like this for your rig, feel free to send me an email.